Hi, thanks for joining us. Here at Live Free Church, we're empowering people to live a life of freedom through Jesus Christ. So, get ready to hear a life-changing and life-empowering message from Pastor Terrell Taylor. Well, uh, we're going to get uh, right into the Word. We've been uh, in a series uh, titled, What We Believe. And every so often, I like to take our church through uh, what we believe as, as a church. I, I believe it's very important to understand why you believe certain things. And so this morning, we're going to talk about the church. Everybody say the church. Come on, say it again. Say the church. Now, before I get into it, I want you to, I want to read a few uh, an actual announcements from church bulletins. Are you ready? These are actual announcements, y'all. Actual. I didn't make these up, okay? At least Google told me these are actual, okay? One of them said this, uh, remember in prayer the many who are sick of our church and the community. <laughs> This is another one. This afternoon, there will be a meeting in the south and north ends of the church. Children will be baptized at both ends. <laughs> Very true. These are true announcements. Ladies, don't forget the rummage sale. It's a chance to get rid of those things not worth keeping around the house. Don't forget your husbands. Uh, here's another one. Low self-esteem support group will meet Thursday. Please use the back door. <laughs> oh, here's my last one. The associate minister unveiled the new church's tithing campaign slogan last Sunday. I upped my pledge, up yours. Y'all can laugh. These are just... Actual announcements. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the church today. Now, um, the significance of the church, uh, we're going to be addressing the significance of God's church. Now, uh, ecclesiology is a big uh, theological word uh, that really just means the study of the church, okay? Ecclesiology means the study of the church. It comes from two Greek words meaning assembly and word. It combined, uh, the meaning being combined to mean the study of the church. So assembly and the word means to study the church. Uh, ecclesiology is crucial to understand God's purpose for believers in the world today. Uh, ecclesiology also helps us to understand the role of the church and our role in the church. A biblical understanding of ecclesiology would go a long way to correct many of the problems uh, that we face in our churches today. So above all, we must understand, number one, that the church is the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. The church is the body of Christ, and each of us, we have a specific function within the role of the church, within the role of the body. So the church is God's design for community. Everybody say the church is God's design for community. Now, we've lived in uh, what we've heard all these last six months, unprecedented times, right? None of us, as far as I know, have lived through another virus before, unless you're over 100 and something years old, okay? Uh, but this is the first time any of us have had to go through something like this, and it has really challenged our lives. It's challenged our marriages. It's challenged our families. It's, it's challenged our, our finances, and, and, and be, because they've told us to social distance and, and not hug. Matter of fact, yesterday, uh, me and my little son, uh, Trenton, we were out uh, at Wally World. We were at Walmart, and we were shopping by the Spirit, okay? Remember that. But we were there, and I looked, and I saw some, some lady. She had this mask on, and, and I saw her eyes, and I said, is that Joanne? She's like, Pasta. And we almost ran to hug each other, and we were like, oh, uh-oh, elbow, elbow. You know. 
because it's been six months since I've seen her. And, and we had two other um, members of our church with her, and we were all just so overjoyed to see each other. She's like, Pastor, when are you going to open the church? When are you going to open the church? I said, in three weeks. In three weeks. And she said, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. So uh, we're excited about that. But this has been a challenge, uh, this virus, to community, right? And, and the church has also been challenged. So we're going to talk about the importance of, of how we can uh, continue to build community and to stay connected. Here is our statement of faith, and you can find this on our website. It says this, the church is a local community of believers, Unified through faith in Christ. It is the body of Christ, the habitation of God through the Spirit with divine appointments for the fulfillment of Jesus' great commission. I know uh, Pastor Laura is here. I know you're excited about that, right? Right? The fulfillment of Jesus' great commission. It is committed, the church is committed to the teachings of Christ. Not Buddha, come on, not Harry Krishna, not what, the teachings of Christ. To obeying all of his commands, and it seeks to bring the gospel to the world. Every person who was born of the Spirit, we talked about that of the last several weeks. Every person who was born of the Spirit is an integral part of the church as a member of the body of believers. The church works together, everybody say together, in love and unity, intent on the ultimate purpose of glorifying our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? There are several other scriptures that uh, you can go on our website and look those up and study those for yourself. But I'm going to deal uh, with a few of those uh, scriptures uh, that's going to help us understand the role of the church. But I want to ask uh, several questions today. What is the church? What is the purpose of the church? And what is kononia? All right. Some of y'all thought that might have been a, a drink at um, a Starbucks. Kononia. No, but it's, it's, an, it's a word I'm going to break down for you, okay? So what is the church? Well, many people today uh, understand that the church, right, uh, understand the church as just being a building. Some people link building and church as synonymous terms. But this is not the biblical understanding of church. The word church comes from the Greek word ecclesia. All right, and we have that there on your screen if you want to write that down. It comes from the Greek word ecclesia, which is defined as assembly or called out ones. Amen. We are the called out ones. We are called to assemble. So the root meaning of church is not that of a building, but of people. The root meaning of church is a body of believers. We, we might meet in a building. We might not meet in a building. But this does not limit us as the church. The church is the body of Christ of which he is head. Turn with me to Ephesians, the first chapter. And we're going to look at verses 22 and 23. Out of the NIV translation, it says, And God placed all things under his feet, Jesus' feet, and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. Verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The complete Jewish Bible translation says it like this. Also, he has put all things under his feet and made him head over everything for the messianic community, which is his body, the full expression of him who fills all creation. Wow. So the church, Ecclesia, we, we are an assembly. We are a gathering. We are a gathered body called out to make a difference in the world. The church's responsibility is to be the full expression of Christ in the earth. 
That's why personally during this time, I've even become more bold. Why? Because I'm a representative of Jesus Christ. Why? Because I'm an ambassador of Christ. And if people can believe whatever they want to believe, I should be able to believe whatever I want to believe. And listen, believers, we should be bold with our faith. We don't have to conform to to culture and, and paradigm shifts. We have to conform, the word of God says, to the image of Jesus Christ. So our responsibility is to be the expression of Jesus in the earth. The body of Christ, uh, we, we are believers, right, who, who we are now representatives because we have the power of the Holy Spirit in our life, flowing in our life, moving upon us to do kingdom exploits and to be kingdom examples. I, I taught that last week. The fruit of the Spirit, we need the fruit of the Spirit so we can be kingdom examples, amen? And we need the, the gifts of the Spirit so we can do kingdom exploits. We need them both. So as believers, we are part of what we call the worldwide church. Another term would be uh, called the universal church, which really, it, it means that we are one church worldwide. Because we've been baptized, amen, into Jesus Christ. We have a personal relationship with Yeshua. And it says this in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. I am excited today because the body of Christ is not limited by ethnic expression. The body of Christ is not limited by your age. The body of Christ is not limited by how much money you have or don't have. The body of Christ is not limited by your political affiliation. The body of Christ is one body in one name, baptized in one spirit, amen, for one purpose. And that is to bring hope to this world through Jesus Christ. I need, I need some more amens. If y'all going to come, y'all better amen me this morning. <laughs> so this verse is speaking uh, of the importance of the body of Christ. And how we, as as the body of Christ worldwide, are his representative. Now, there's not only the worldwide uh, universal church, but there's also the local church. There's local expressions of the worldwide church. Now, the local church, we can see uh, uh, many, many examples in the New Testament. One uh, is in Galatians, the first chapter. Uh, uh, Galatians was a local expression of a local body. Uh, A Corinthian church, they were local believers in Corinth. And so Paul established also local assemblies, local churches all throughout uh, Asia. And so what we see here today is that Live Free Church is a local expression of the worldwide church. First Baptist Church is a local expression, right? Christ the Lutheran uh, Church is a local expression. The St. Lawrence Catholic Church is a local expression. But listen, we are an expression of our uniqueness as a local body. The local church is where believers can fully apply their gifts. We, we learned last week God gives us gifts and, and he gives us uh, uh, skills and abilities to advance his kingdom. And, and we see that as a local body, we need each other. We need each other's gifts. So I'm here to encourage you. If you've been used to sitting at home just watching church, amen, you better get ready to be the church, amen. Because we've never stopped being the church. Whether they said we can gather or not, we never stop being the church. So, we are here in a very difficult and challenging time. We all grew up with this scripture, Hebrews 10 and 25. It says this, not giving up meeting together. King James says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Right? 
as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another and, and so much more as ye see the day approaching. I grew up with that scripture ringing in my ears that we cannot forsake the assembly of coming together. Because the day is approaching. Jesus is coming. But with this virus, that's been a challenge. Well, pastor, I haven't been able to come to church. Well, my question for you is have you been on a Zoom call? Now, I know some of y'all have Zoomed out of Zoom calls. <clears throat> I understand the challenges. It is not the same, but it is the best that we can do with what we can do in the time that we can do it. So these Zoom calls represent an opportunity to connect with uh, uh, other believers in fellowship around God's word and in prayer. I'm telling you, that men's prayer call was off the chain. It's one thing to hear these awesome women of God praying, but it's, a, it's another thing to hear some men, amen, going in with God in prayer or in worship. Come on, men. Amen. We've had incredible Zoom calls with, with uh, Brother Grady, with our, our book of Philippians, and Pastor Laura and, and Lauren and Minister Carlitha uh, teaching Our Lady from the book of Hebrews every second and fourth Tuesday. Listen, jump on the Zoom call. We all can make excuses, but excuses is not going to help you grow. Oh, I think I, that, that's worth saying again. Excuses is not going to help you grow. Well, well, pastor, uh, well, well, pastor, uh, well, well, pastor, when you call me, when you email me, I'm going to say, well, I haven't seen you on the Zoom call. Where you been? You know, we're we trying to grow through this, not just go through this. Couples, I encourage you to get on this Thursday Zoom call with Pastor Chad and Jelana. Amen. They've got some things they want to share and pour out into our couples here. Long lifers, y'all been, been y'all just been tearing it up. Long lifers, y'all got it going on. Y'all got it going on, I tell you. Pastor T and Minister Carlita, man, they've been doing a wonderful job in gathering our seniors together. But guess what? We've done a very good job of doing our best to stay connected. And now we're going to slowly reopen so that we can see each other face to face. But don't come late. Y'all done got used to being on time doing, just watching us online. But you got to get here on time, too. Come on. Amen. That was free. Amen. That was free for all those. I, I feel it in my spirit. That was for some of that. was a word of knowledge for Sabrina Wren. Oh, no, Sabrina's here. God, God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> That's my sis. That's my sis. We, we do that all the time. It's good to have relationships. Listen, we, we can laugh and joke around, but let me tell you this. Uh, the, the Reynolds were here yesterday in, in Fitzroy, and we were getting some things together. And, and, and when the uh, Reynolds and I, we can talk for hours, y'all. Sometimes we have about five times that we open the door, and, and we're about to leave, and then we close it, and we keep talking. That happened yesterday. But while we were about to leave, a young lady came up. And she said, is the church open? And we said, no, we haven't opened it up officially. And we've kind of, you know, been cleaning and doing some things. And we're getting ready to leave. And she said, okay, I just wanted to come and find a place to pray. Well, we said, well, listen, we can pray for you right now. And Sabrina began to pray, and it was such a powerful anointing there. And the young lady began to weep and, and cry. And, 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 and little did Sabrina know that she had even quoted this young lady's favorite scripture during that prayer. God gave me a word of knowledge for her. I shared something with her, and, and she was just so overwhelmed by the love and the power. See, that's what being the church is all about. We can laugh. We can cry together. Amen. We can go through life's ups and downs together. That's what it's called being real people. And here at Live Free Church, we are real people. We're not trying to be something that we're not. We just want to be authentic. We just want to be real. We want God to use us. Listen, we all go through things, yes, and we want to be there for each other as we are going through. 
Somebody say, I need to go through with you. Come on. I need to go through something together. I need some brothers and some sisters, amen, praying for me and coming along my side. Amen. That's what community is all about. So what is the purpose of the church? Uh, well, the purpose of the church we see uh, here in Acts, the second chapter, and verse 42. It says this. Now, remember, this is what the purpose of the church is. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to breaking of bread and to prayer. We've got Mama Viola here this uh, uh, morning. I'm telling you, this is a woman of prayer. I was so glad. I'm going to sneak a hug in. She might not know I even hugged her. I might try to sneak one in this morning. But Mama Viola been saying, man, I've been missing church. I've been missing our prayer gatherings. And yeah, well, that's one of the reasons for the church. But let me talk about the first one. It is teaching biblical doctrine, number one. Teaching biblical doctrine. That's the first purpose of the church. The church is to teach biblical doctrine so that we can be grounded in our faith. Ephesians 4 and 14 tells us this. Then we will no longer be like children forever changing our minds about what we believe. I'll say that again. Then we will no longer be like children forever changing our minds about what we believe. Believe. Why? Because someone has told us something different or has cleverly lied to us and made the lie sound like the truth. That's the Living Bible translation. Some believers right now have just been going back and forth with what they believe because someone has cleverly said, like the serpent said in the garden, did God really say? And that's why if you are a believer, you need to be a part of a church that teaches the word of God and will not compromise the truth of God's word regardless of what culture says. Amen? And I'm going to tell you, Live Free is that church. We, we're one of them. We're one of them. We're not going to compromise the word of God so that we can make you feel better. We're not going to compromise the word of God so that we can make society feel better about us. No, listen, Jesus said they persecuted me and they're going to persecute you. So if you're not being persecuted, that means you must be flowing downstream with the culture. I'm an upstreamer. <laughs> I like to flow against the tide. I'm just, that's just how I'm built. I don't need the validation from this world. I need validation from the word. Oh, that, that, that deserved more amens from that. Come on. Number two, another purpose of the church is providing a place of fellowship. Everybody say fellowship. Fellowship for believers. We, the church is a place for fellowship where Christians can be devoted to one another and, and we can honor one another. We can instruct one another. We can be kind and compassionate to one another. We can challenge one another and encourage one another. And most importantly, we can love one another. Listen, we're not always going to see everything eye to eye, and, and we've been raised different ways, and we've come from different backgrounds. Uh, Tara and I, uh, we had a, a wonderful opportunity <clears throat> to spend time with Brother Grady and our dear sister Dixie uh, yesterday for, for breakfast, and they were just sharing their stories and their family lives and, and upbringing. And I'm telling you, it's fascinating when you start learning more about those you serve with. It's just, it was like, wow, that is amazing. God brought you through this. God dealt with you in this area of your life. And Tara and I, we shared uh, uh, parts of our story as well. And it's just, listen, you really don't know people until you got to take the time to get to know them. Amen? So we were created for fellowship, fellows in the same ship. Come on. Go in the same direction. Amen. Number three, another uh, purpose for the church is, and, we, and we're taking these uh, purpose statements from what we just read in the Acts, uh, the second chapter and 42, second verse. It is eating together and celebrating communion. 
Next week we'll be celebrating communion. I'm excited because we'll have our, our, some of our leaders here. And, and we'll, for the first time we'll be celebrating here uh, together as a family like that. But, but eating together and celebrating communion. The church is to be a, a place where we as believers can have some good fellowship over some good cooking. Amen. I miss those fellowship dinners. We're going to get back to it, but we, we got to ease our way. But, man, you, we have some cooks here in this church. And every time I go to one of our live-free dinners next door, I gain about three pounds. But it's fellowship. We're eating. We're talking. We're laughing. You know, we're getting to know one another. We're, we're building community over a meal. And it's a, you know, it it's might be somewhat of a, an archaic idea that we should sit down and create time to have meals together. But listen, that's by God's design. All through scripture, you see where, where they, uh, whether it was kings and, and priests or, or prophets, they always had meal. They always had food, sacrificing and having a meal. Because it creates bond, it bonds, and, and it creates and knits our hearts together. Especially, my heart is knitted to those who can cook. <laughs> As believers, we're also to observe the Lord's Supper together. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And so when we come together as the body of Christ and we're there together and, and, and we're in this place together, amen, and, and we're communing together during communion, it's a powerful experience. Number four, another reason why the church exists and the purpose for the church is praying together. Everybody say praying together. The church is to be a place that promotes prayer, teaches prayer, and practices prayer. Philippians 4 and 6, verse 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all, this, all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The church is a place of prayer. I'm so glad Minister Carlitha, she, she was telling me how God led her to fast on Mondays and Wednesdays this month. And I said, you know what, I want to jump in and let's just let the church know about it too. Because we need God to speak. We need him to move. Amen. There's, there's uh, mighty men like Jonathan Kahn who, who, had, who had all week in prayer and, 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 and speakers about uh, how to return, America returning to God. We need to be a place of prayer. We can't put all our hope in people. We need to put our hope in God. Amen. Amen. So, the church is to be faithful in all of these areas, including sharing the good news. We are a lighthouse to our community, and we need to be about kingdom business and ministering also to the community around us. Pastor Laura, we talked not long ago, and we're going to have another outreach uh, for Christmas, uh, uh, this coming Christmas. Many of you were involved in our outreach, our back-to-school outreach, and Pastor Laura's team, you all did an amazing job. It was so, uh, such a blessing to our community. And we're about to do the same thing for Christmas, amen? So we're bringing hope. We're, br we're meeting needs. And, and, and we are also called to not only meet the needs of the community, but also to equip those who are part of this house. To equip believers with the tools they need to overcome sin and to remain free from the pollution of this world. Some of you believers, and, and I've, I've been known to do this in my walk, amen, because I haven't always been doing the right thing, even though I've, I've been saved for a very long time. There's been seasons of my life that I've partaken in sin, and I knew it, and guess what I did? I didn't want to be around other believers, and I see it all the time as a pastor. 
Some of you, you, you don't want to be a part of something or a fellowship because you're hiding something. <laughs> but that's why uh, the scripture admonishes us to confess your sins, your faults to one another that ye may be healed. We are in need of healing and transformation in areas of our life. So don't, don't disregard your brother or don't disregard your sister. Listen, as you run back to God, you need to be running back to a brother or sister and allowing someone to be there while you are going through what you are going through. Amen? Amen? So we are here to help each other to grow uh, in, in, in Christian fellowship and in the understanding of God's word. Ultimately, the church is Christ's hands, his mouth and feet in this world. We are the body of Christ. We are to do the things that Jesus would do if he was physically on this earth. The church is to be Christian, Christ-like, and Christ-following. I want to encourage you, brother and sister, here, listen. I encourage you to read the words of Jesus. You know that some of you have Bibles and it's in red. <laughs> read the words of Jesus. He has a lot to say to us. And guess what? His words are still ringing true. They're still filled with power and revelation. Amen. For our lives. Jesus was a radical. In the sense that, listen, he said, I came to do the will of my father. Amen. And I'm going to, I'm intent on fulfilling it. Jesus didn't allow anyone or anything to deter him from his calling and purpose for coming to this world. Jesus was such a radical, amen. They came to him, he was doing ministry, and, and some people say, hey, your mom and your brothers out there, your sisters, hey, they want to see you. Jesus said, what? What? You talking about Mary? Mary want to see me? He said, who are my brothers? Who are my sisters? Who are my mother? Those that do the will of God. Jesus left his mama hanging. That might be a good title for a sermon. Now. Jesus left his mama hanging. He did. He left his sister's brother. He left them all hanging. He's like, I'm doing the well. And so when you read about Jesus and you begin to understand more about him and you desire to become more like him, listen, the, the desires of this world will fade. The things that you think are important will fade. Let me tell you, you cannot take your bank account with you to the other side. Proverbs says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. You can leave some money behind for somebody that's still alive on this end, but you're not taking it with you. So when you begin to understand uh, how to live your life in light of eternity and in light of who Jesus is, listen, we can get through, amen, and we can continue to be strengthened. We can have the peace. We can have the joy. We can have the, the promises that Jesus has promised us even in the midst of a virus. Even in the midst of, of anger and, and hatred and, and, and all the things that we're seeing played out in our society. We, when we focus on Jesus, he will give us the strength and the power to continue to be a pilgrim that is just passing through this world. This world is not our home. The world as we know it. But let me continue on, and I'm, gonna, I'm about to be done. Listen, we are also, as the body of Christ, we're, we're called to a, a, a fellowship, and, and that's what the word kononia is. It's a Greek word that occurs 20 times in the Bible. Kononia's primary meaning is fellowship, sharing things in common, and common union or communion. That's what kononia means. We see this again in Acts 2 and 42 as the first occurrence of this world. They, they devoted themselves not only to the, apostle, the apostles' teaching, but to fellowship. Christian fellowship is a key aspect of the Christian life. Listen, you are not created to do life alone. You are not created to do life alone. 
Believers in Christ, we are to come together in love and in faith and in encouragement. And this is what the essence of Kononia is. is Philippians 2, chapter, verses 1 through 2. We covered this in our men's study. But I wanted to uh, encourage you in, in, in today's message as well. It says this, therefore, if you have any what? Encourage. Well, let me, for some of y'all, y'all might think, uh, therefore, if you have any discouragement. <laughs> some people, some people just, that's all. You see somebody coming, he's like, oh, Lord, I just know this is going to be a discouraging conversation. But Paul says, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, verse 2, then make my joy complete. Paul says, by what? Being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Hallelujah. Kononia is being like-minded. What does that mean? United in, in, in purpose. Doesn't mean you're going to see every detail of life like your brother or your sister. There might even be disagreements from time to time. But it doesn't disconnect us from our united purpose. We serve alongside each other for the benefit of the king. Our koinonia with each other is based on our common koinonia in Jesus Christ. Amen? 1 John 1, 6 through 7, it says, if we claim to have fellowship or koinonia with Jesus, him, and yet walk in darkness, we lie and not live, do we, we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. <coughs> Now, I do understand that, amen, God may lead you into relationships with unbelievers and for the fact that, that he, you're going to be a light to them. Now, I'm not talking about a marriage relationship. Listen, if they're not saved, you better run. Well, Pastor, he told me that he was going to change when I got married to him. And you look like this. No. No. <laughs> if he was a devil before you, you got married, he's going to be a worse one after marriage. So Paul was very clear about if you're looking for a spouse and they're an unbeliever, listen, you better run because that is not the person for you. Amen? Paul says don't be unequally yoked. But I do understand that some of us have co-workers and we, we work with people who, who believe very different. Some of you work with atheists. Some of you work with people who've been hurt in church. Some of you work with people who were never raised with a Christian mindset or understanding. And what my encouragement to you is this. Listen, seek to know them and be a light to them and, and, and allow build a friendship with them because you never know when they might ask you for prayer. You never know when they might say, listen, I need something something more and it seems like you've got something that I need you never know when a person is about uh, about to be ready to give their life to Christ because of your witness amen but I also caution you to, to, to be careful because you've got to stand your ground. You've got to stick to your guns. If the Bible says it's wrong, then it's wrong. It doesn't matter if your coworker or your friend, amen, they might have issues in their personal sexual life or they might have issues in other areas of their life, but you've got to stand your ground and says this is what God says. And not be ashamed about it, but be loving with it. Be kind with it. Because we're here at the end of the day, we're here to love God and to love people. But that does not mean we have to sacrifice the truth. And that's what's being done today. There's a movement called the Emergent Church Movement. And, and, and it takes its name uh, as culture changes. This, 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 the emergent church movement, they claim that the church needs to change as the culture changes. 
in response, right? So, uh, so what the emergent church movement is, it, it, it's, it's a movement of church leaders and churches that, that uh, are, are stick to what we call the postmodernism, postmodernism thinking. Now, postmodernism thinking is a Western uh, philosophy that started in the late 20th century. And, and what postmodernism is, it's broad skepticism. It's subjectivism, Terrellism. Subjectivism, there we go. <laughs> Let me tell you, man, speaking in public is the number one fear of people. Praise God. I think I'm doing all right. Hey, Amen. I do. <laughs> But that's what postmodern, it's skepticism, it's subjectivism, and it's relativism. Postmodern uh, people, they distrust uh, uh, ideologies and, and objective reality and absolute truth. That's why people today saying the Bible is not true. It's not absolute truth. Truth is whatever I feel it to be. Truth is that I am six foot six. Listen, NBA, you better give me a chance. I'm coming. I'm 6'6". Six, six. No, Terrell, you're five, nine and a half, wanting to be 5'10". But you got Pastor Tyrone. He, 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 you can. <laughs> ah, that's, that's my brother. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. <laughs> But listen, people are living their lives based upon what they feel and what they want to say. So guess what culture does? Culture says, okay, if you feel. And listen, and, and I was reading an, an, an article that really helped me this week. You know, some of these people are dealing with what used to be called a mental illness. When someone who was a man uh, said they, they believed they were a woman, it, years ago it was classified, and I forget the exact term, but it was classified as a mental illness, and they tried to help the person through it. But now what culture has done, it says, well, your truth is whatever you want it to be. And as believers, we've got to stick to the word of God. I tell people, listen, if you want to argue about transgenderism, I'm going to tell you very simply, there's only two kinds of plumbing. Very simple. Your plumbing determines who you are. Now, you can cut it, you can drop it, you can whatever you want to do with it. But it's not changing the original intent of God's design for your life. Amen? Some of y'all like, quiet, pastor. Ooh, I don't know. about. Yeah, go tell him there's only two kind of plumbing and just walk away. You don't have to stand there and argue. But that's what postmodernism does. It says that my truth is truth. Where God's word says his truth, come on, somebody say is truth. Amen? His truth is truth. So I want to encourage us as I conclude. Listen, we have to be the church in 2020 like the church was, amen, when Jesus was first resurrected and he poured out his spirit over 2,000 years ago. We've got to still be the church in America, the church in Europe, the church in Asia, the church in Africa, the church in Oceania, the church in South Africa, South America, North America. We've got to be the church in the Caribbean too. Amen? And all my Caribbean people say amen. Amen. <laughs> so listen, I'm going to leave you with one, one poem and then I'm going to pray. This poem is entitled this, If You Want to Kill the Church. If you want to kill the church, the writer says this, and the writer is unknown. The writer says this, never go to your church or meetings held there on Zoom. I added on Zoom. Never go to your church or meetings held there. If you do go, be late. It's no one's affair. If the weather is bad, either too hot or snowing, just stay at home and rest, for there will be others going. 
But should you attend, be sure and remember to find fault with the work, each official and member. Be sure to hold back on your offerings and tithes. The bills would be paid by the rest of the guys. And never take office if offered the post, but eagerly criticize work of the host. If not on a committee, you're placed. Be sore. If you find that you are, don't attend anymore. When asked your opinion on this thing or that, or that, have nothing to say, just turn them down flat. Then after the meeting, shine out like the sun by telling the folks how it should have been done. Don't do any more. Don't do any more than you possibly can. Leave the work for some other woman or man. And when you see faithful ones work themselves sick, then stand up and holler, it's run by a click. That's a poem entitled, If You Want to Kill the Church. So let's go to God, God in prayer. Father, we thank you. Lord, that Live Free Church is going to be what you purposed it to be. Satan is not going to be able to kill this local expression of believers here in Lawrenceville. We thank you. We thank you that he does not have the power to overcome the bride of Christ, the church. We thank you, Lord, that there is a remnant, that there is a people, Lord, who are, are sold out to you and for you. We thank you, Lord, that there is a, a purpose still for the church in 2020. We thank you that, Lord, we are going to be people who worship you in spirit and in truth. We're going to be people, Lord, who study your word. We're going to be people of prayer. We're going to be people who love one another and help each other, Lord. We're going to be the church, Lord, that uh, partakes of, of baptism and, and the Lord's Supper, the communion with the saints. We're going to be people who learn how to live godly lives. And when we sin, if we should sin, Lord, we're going to be people who repent. We're going to be people, Lord, who recognize our faults and our failures. Not to, to make an excuse, but, Lord, to say, I'm, I'm in need of your healing and your deliverance and your power in this area of my life. And Lord, we're also going to be the body of Christ, the church who, who we, we are equipped to evangelize the world. So Father, I thank you for the church worldwide. I thank you for brothers and sisters all around the world. But Lord, I also thank you for this amazing church family called Live Free Church. I thank you, God, that you are blessing us and strengthening us, even in a time where many, many churches have had to close their doors. I thank you, Lord, that we've been steadfast and unmovable, Lord. We've continued in, in the work of God. I thank you, Lord, there's, there's more online than was even coming to our building every week. Hallelujah. We're reaching people all around the world, and I am grateful to shepherd and lead such an amazing, anointed, loving, and caring, and authentic group of people. We are not perfect, but, Lord, we do desire to be pleasing. I thank you for our leaders, Lord. I thank you. For Shauna Page, Lord, who leads our Freedom Town, Lord. I thank you for Bobby, Lord, who, who, who leads our ushers and, and, and parking, Lord, and, 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 and pastors' uh, personal attendance, Lord. I thank you for Bobby. I thank you for Pastor Cheryl, Lord, who ministers to live free kids, our young people, Lord, our children, Lord, that are in elementary school, Lord. I thank you. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Lou and Sabrina, Lord, who pour into our young people, our teenagers, Lord, in, in teen life, God. 
Lord, I thank you, Lord, for Terrence and Lauren, Lord, who, who pour into our young men and women, Lord, who are in college and who are in their early stages of their careers. I thank you for true life. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Chad and Jelana, Lord, who are praying for and pouring into our couples here at Live Free Church, our Love Life Ministry. I thank you for them. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Tyrone and, and, and Carlitha, Lord, who are shepherding and leading such an amazing group of seniors known as Love Life. I am grateful for them. Lord, I thank you for Tracy Williams, Lord, who's who's head of, uh, director of our, our ushers, Lord God. And I know, Lord, uh, as we regather, Lord, there's going to be that need once again, and I'm grateful for her. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Laura, Lord, who, le out, who leads our Living Impact Outreach team. Father, I thank you for her dedication and her heart for the lost. Lord, I thank you, God, for Fitzroy. Lord, who is has, has doing such an amazing job with our media team, Lord, and Michelle and, and the team here that is so dedicated so the gospel can go forth all around the world, so that worship can go forth all around the world. God, we are grateful for him and his leadership, God, in this local body of believers. I thank you for Tara, Father God. Lord, she's right there by my side. Lord, it's not always easy. But God, I thank you for her commitment to you and her commitment to me, her commitment to this church body. I hope I didn't leave any of our leaders out. I'm trying to, to go through as I'm praying. But I thank you also for Brother Grady and Dixie, Lord God, and how they are such amazing servants and disciples and loving on people, Lord, and caring for our homeless population, God. Lord, they do so much, God, that they people will never know unless they ask or have a conversation with them. And I'm grateful for them. We thank you for Live Free Church. We thank you, God, for what you started seven years ago. I thank you for our board members, Lord. I thank you for Andre and, and Ron and Serena. I thank you, Lord, for Marvin and Angela, Lord, as part of our finance team, Lord. I thank you for Grady, Lord, who's on our board as well, God. I thank you for those who serve in ways that people might not ever really know how they serve, but they serve in a way, God, that helps this ministry continue to be effective. So, Father, my prayer for Live Free Church is that whatever is ahead over the next month or two or three or six months or the next year or two years, Lord, I pray that we would be a church with prophetic unction. I pray that we would be a church, Lord, that we're not just being tossed to and fro by predictions or the experts or this or that. Lord, we want to be a church that we are prophetically tuned in to the Spirit of God. Lord, we're not going to be people who ignore everything that comes, but God, we don't want that, that comes through the news or whatever, but we, we want to be a people, Lord, that we're sensitive to the move of your spirit more than anything else. And we do not apologize for who we are. Hallelujah. Come on, just begin to thank God for Live Free Church. Just begin to thank God for the, for, for the relationships and the people that have God has brought across your way. Amen. If you're here today or you're watching online, just begin to thank God. Amen. For the people of Live Free Church, I thank you. I love my brothers and my sisters. Lord, I thank you for my church family people who've been there for me and prayed me through and, and have supported, Lord, me and my wife and my family. I thank you for them. 
There are pastors who are committing suicide. There are pastors who are giving up. There are pastors who are closing down their churches. There are pastors who are walking away from God. But Lord, I thank you for my church family. Because they come along my side and encourage me and my wife and pray for us and, and love on us, God. My wife was here today. She would say the same thing. She loves you dearly. and She appreciates each and every one of you so very much. And I just want to say as we conclude, please continue to pray for us and to pray for our family and to pray for all of our families here, for our ministry leaders and our board and all those who are serving in areas of ministry, pray for them. And listen, if you are ready to get back involved, we're going to be opening up in three weeks. And we can't wait to see you. <laughs> it's going to be wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Just make sure you come with your mask. We're going to have, and we have hand sanitizing stations. And, and uh, we are practicing social distancing. And we're going to give air hugs. But, hey, it's just going to be great to see each other. And uh, love you very dearly. And these are the five reasons why we exist. We say this every week so that we can continue to have the vision uh, on the inside of our hearts and in our minds. Um, we exist to worship God with passion and expression, to share the good news of Jesus with others, to connect with other believers in meaningful relationships, uh, empowering leaders to fulfill their God-given destiny, and what is the last one? Preparing disciples to impact present-day culture. God, we thank you for Live Free, and we bless each and every one in their week this week. God bless you. Love you, family. Go and be empowered to live a life of freedom through Jesus Christ. We hope you enjoyed today's message and pray that you experience the freedom God has for you through his son, Jesus Christ. John chapter 8, verse 36 says, if the son gives you freedom, you are free. If you would like more information about Live Free Church, please visit us on the web at www.livefreechurch.org.